PTC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 22 Part 3. The next component that we're going to go over is the straight coupling and it's very similar to the tapered coupling. It's a little bit simpler obviously and um, we'll cover the drawing part of it later at another time. Again with this one we have all the different features and dimensions shown on separate illustrations. So everything should be covered here. There's nothing missing. You're going to be doing a counter bore again, actually more of a spot face and a um, dowel, dowel cut. So again, it's very similar to the taper cover. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I'm going to open this up again and we're going to go into the tools and model player. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to step through the sequence of design here. And you can see we've done the first revolve feature without having the round put in. And there's the round at this time. And again, you can move it around. This one, it doesn't really make any difference. You actually could have done this um, <clears throat> all as one feature if you wanted to do that. So it's up to you. If you want to put the round in here, that would be fine. <clears throat> so we have our just straight cut. It's nothing more than a hole, so it's not tapered or it doesn't require a section. And we put a chamfer on it and a key seat again. And we have our spot faced and hole. And lastly, we have the dowels. So let's start off with the uh, with the cut here for our slot, because that's the command we used. We used the old anatomic feature. You'll be doing just a revolved remove material, nothing else. So it's pretty much the exact same thing. Um, let's locate this in the model tree and we're going to edit the definition of it. Again, this old menu is going to come up for mine. Yours you're going to do with the revolved removed material. In other words, a revolved cut. I personally just want to show you the section here that was created because you're going to be doing something very similar. Now, you'll notice a couple of things. <clears throat> Number one, it doesn't have a diameter dimension. We do need that. And I don't think there's a construction center line. So let's put one of those in there first. So we'll put the center line in. And that'll give us the opportunity to, let's see if we can click change to diameter. So let's do that. Oh, that doesn't look good. It's trying to do the diameter around this center line here. So we're going to dimension and center line, line, oop, sorry, wrong one. And you're going to go center line, line, center line. I'm kind of wondering if I did that wrong on the last one I showed you. I'm going to want to go to the middle here, obviously. So that's the dimension to give a bolt circle. Now, when we zoom in here, we'll see that we've got a, kind of a strange dimension here. Instead of doing that, when you do your own sketch here, first of all, make sure you put your axis of revolution in. I would do that first. <clears throat> then do the construction center line. And what you want to do here is come up with some references. This is a reference on the top. That's fine. The reference is already on the bottom. So you're going to add the one on the top face here for the flange. But what you want to do is just go to coincident. And after you sketch this, make these two things coincident. Or when you sketch them, after you've established this as a, as a uh, reference, then just simply when you're sketching, make sure it aligns. You're not, you don't need a dimension here. All you're trying to do is cut out equal to the top face of the flange here, nothing else. And it's going to remove the material. Now how big, no matter how big or small that round gets, this will always cut through it because it's referenced to the top here. 
of the tangency of the round. All right, the only other thing that's really different here, or not really different, but uh, same as what we did before, and I'll just go over it one more time, is the key seat here. So instead of doing what they did, and we can see that, let's look at theirs. This is, uh, again, kind of a lot of work. They put in some references, and they put in three lines, and they cut down. Now, this is a little bit easier because they didn't have to put a datum plane at an angle. But it's not really what you want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Model tab, Extrude, and we're going to remove material. We'll sketch on this datum plane here, and I'll make it on this side. And what we want to do is go all the way through. So references, select the very top. Bottom's already selected. Center line's already selected. Um, we do want to have, let's show our hole there. So you maybe if you want, you can put this as a reference also. And right mouse button line. And basically, you're just coming straight down. It's vertical. You could also make these two parallel instead of using vertical. If you do something like that, that's fine. Um, it's going to tell you you've got, uh, see, we've got parallel here. You can say this and this are parallel. But it's going to say you've already got a constraint called vertical. You've got to get rid of one or the other. It won't allow you to overdimension or over um, uh, constrain a sketch for a feature. So here's our dimension. In this particular case, um, many times the key seats are dimensioned from here to here, like so, or even from the opposite side. So they would be from this edge over. So those are an, those are an option for you to take into account. And again, you'll change the dimension on this. Check, and let's go to. Uh, Symmetric, lots of place to get that. You can put your cursor over the top, right mouse button, symmetric. You can come up here, obviously, and go to symmetric. It doesn't make any difference. And let's go into our shaded with thing. You can see we're slightly big here. Like so. Make sure your arrows are in the correct direction. And completed. So other than that, there's really nothing uh, special or different or harder on this one than there was the taper coupling.